Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, a message that I, I want to convey in, in five minutes, insha'Allah, I'll do my best. And let me begin with that scene right at the end of the Battle of Uhud. We know that the Muslims were defeated because they disobeyed the commands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa we know that they were trying hard to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the disbelievers. To the extent that they actually believed that they did it. And a rumor circulated around the, the battlefield that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was killed. But we know that a group of companions surrounded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, protecting him. And at the end, they would draw him to the top of the mountain of Uhud. So the very top of the mountain. That no one can see them. So Abu Sufyan, radiallahu anhu, who was not a Muslim at the time. Later on, he became a Muslim. But at the time, he was actually the leader of the campaign of shirk against Islam. He started calling from the bottom of that mountain, Afikum Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is Muhammad still alive? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to his companions, La tujibu. No one answered him. He repeated again, Afikum Muhammad. He got no answer. Then he said, Afikum ibn Abi Quhafa, meaning Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Is Abu Bakr as Siddiq amongst you still alive? The Prophet said, La tujibu. Don't answer him. He repeated it twice. He got no answer. Then he said, Afikum ibn al Khattab. Is Umar still alive? Is Umar still amongst you? لا تجيبو. Don't answer him. He repeated the question twice. He got no answer. Immediately Abu Sufyan felt that the three of them were killed. Immediately he said, أعلو هبل. Hubal is their idol, their god. Rise, Hubal. Now we can win. If those three, the message I'm, I'm trying to convey, Abu Sufyan made that statement when he felt that these men are not there. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the same guidance which transformed the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from zeros to heroes. I like to use that. Study the history of Umar before Islam and after Islam. Before Islam, you can sum it up in one page, what he used to do. After Islam, I don't think you will have enough pages to write his biography and what he did. The same guidance still in existence. We have it. We have it in the Quran. We have it in the Sunnah. And we have it in the understanding of the blessed generations, the three generations, their understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah. And this is what we need to do to bring this into action, into our own lives as parents. So that we can cultivate it in our children. 
brothers and sisters in Islam, what Islam needs is men. And I don't mean by men, males. We have a lot of males. And actually under that concept of men, a lot of sisters would fall. The caliber of manhood, strength, strong will. A lot of you may be wondering, even our early scholars had the same wonders. Why the story of Musa, you noticing Sheikh Eid and Sheikh Muhammad, they mentioned it every night, you're going to hear it. Musa, 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 Musa. To the extent one of our early scholars said, كَادَ الْقُرْآنُ أَنْ يَكُونَ مُوسَى The whole of the Qur'an was about Musa. Why? Because Bani Israel, the Muslim nation at their time, they experienced exactly what the Ummah is going through now. Oppression, killing. Look at the map of the world. Any bloodshed right now on that map is a blood of a Muslim. No question about it. Any injustice is towards Muslims. We're going through exactly what Bani Israel went through. Sheikh Muhammad recited the verses in Surah Al-Isha, the second rak'ah, uh, 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 the first rak'ah of Surah Al-Qasas, Allah says what? وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّ Now, we want to fix that situation. We want to restore the Muslims, give them power again over the disbelievers. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's speaking. Then Allah says what? وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضِعِي A message, ya ikhwa, out of this world. O mother of Musa, prepare Musa. You see, for us as Muslims to restore that status, which we deserve, we have to wait until we build generations of Muslims. And that is why, brothers and sisters in Islam, any community who does not infest in the next generation is a failing community. You know, we could build nice, beautiful masajid, but if we don't make sure that these children, which we produce here in America, are loving these masajids, are attracted to these masajids, be careful, like the churches are being sold now. May Allah forbid. This masajid also can be subject of sale. For we have brothers and sisters in Islam, a big mission as a community to bring about our youth. You know, subhanAllah, I love the, the brother, the father. I don't know if he left or he's still here. He has his two boys next to him. He said, I just want them to see me praying. It's a beautiful thing. Even though they were making some noise, I said, can I take them to the daycare? So that's a beautiful thing. I respect this, man. I respect that. You know, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of time to raise up that Musa who will change the condition of this Ummah. But if we don't want to waste our time, our energy, this is where we should infest our resources in the next generation. Yes, these young ones, they come to the masajid and they give us a hard time. They run around, I'm chasing them around. That's okay. But you know what? If they like the masajid, if they become attracted to the masajid, we're winners. Because one day me and you are going to die. We're not going to be here anymore. Nobody lasts forever, right? That is why we need that generation, brothers and sisters in Islam. So I encourage you and I encourage the communities and I encourage everybody to give special attention to the youth of the community. Hopefully, inshallah, we'll bring about some more Musas into this Ummah, 
who will change the condition of this ummah, inshallah. And you never know, maybe you're sitting on one. Your own child can be the one. But you gotta believe it. You know, we reveal to the mother of Musa, breastfeed Musa, prepare Musa. You gotta believe this. Inshallah. You believe it. We gotta believe it. Your son could be Musa. My son could be Musa. Your daughter can be Musa. It's possible, right? Allah can make everything happen. But you gotta believe it and we gotta work for it. Jazakumullah khaira. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Okay, we're short on suhoor for Masjid Umar. Just $300, five suhoors, inshallah. If we get three brothers, five brothers sponsoring it, that would be nice, inshallah. Jazakumullah khaira. All right. Thank <laughs> you.